Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Linux edition of the news. These are recorded live Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern at Standard Time. If you want to catch the show live, interact with the comments, of course. Right now, we're not going to be interacting a whole lot today uh, because we are running low in power. And so I'm going to try and get through the news as quick as I possibly can. So if this is if this is short, if it's just over that eight-minute mark, I didn't put it just over eight just to get the ad revenue. No, I put it just over eight just because that's how long I got it. Or maybe that's how short I got it. Let's go ahead and dive on in. Uh, TuxCare is an organization that uh, makes sure that software uh, doesn't go completely defunct. And in this case here, they stepped up to uh, protect uh, Net, uh, .NET 6.0 from Microsoft uh, taking it back and uh, gnoming it in the uh, backfield by Cricket. You know, um, is, is that the same person that is uh, right now going through like confirmation here? It's very, very frightening. Um, interesting. I could say some jokes on that, but uh, I don't want to get too political over here. Anyway, um, TuxCare did announce that Microsoft's .NET 6.0 was uh, uh, went end of life November 2024. Uh, they deemed it an important enough application to keep the system going. So they're going to be keeping up on any security fixes and regularly patching it for the people that still need the dot, uh, .NET uh, 6.0 framework. And uh, a lot of the mission of this organization exists because what they said down here is, you know, when a lot of companies are looking at the prospect, like upgrading things sometimes breaks stuff. And sometimes you can keep it moving longer, then it's a little bit better. And I had one of these with one of my web servers. I've been testing a couple of different alternatives to cPanel. And uh, because cPanel just keeps on jack up their prices. And so I was testing ISP config and I had a zero problems, perfect stability with ISP config for years. And then I upgraded it. And every other week, the system is crashing now, and I still have not completely resolved it. So um, that is one of the reasons why you might want to keep older software around and just slightly patch it rather than pushing new versions. And that's what uh, TuxCare is doing, keeping .NET 6.0 framework open. Budgie is scheduled for some big changes in quarter one, 2025. Uh, with the release of Budgie 1010, they are releasing the Wayland only system. They are dropping all support for X. I obviously am not a huge fan of this approach. I think that the push towards Wayland uh, to the exclusion of everything else, I think is going to set Linux back. I think it has set Linux back a little bit as there are certainly some elements that are not fully supported yet, although Wayland support is getting a lot better. I like the transitional supports like Mint is doing. Let's move a lot more slowly. Let's keep everything functioning and let's transition as the packages are, are working rather than we got to this point in Linux where everything is working. Let's abandon everything that works and go in this completely different direction that doesn't. You know, uh, Now, th their approach to doing Wayland was a little bit different. Things are working a little bit better than some instances, but as of version 1010 of the Budgie desktop, they will no longer have any X support remaining at all. They are stripping it all out. Now, the advantage is we're going to have a lot, probably a lot smaller of a distro and a lot smaller of a desktop environment for those wanting to install it. But at the same time, it will come at, uh, at the expense if there is some X only application that you really need to work. Uh, it's probably not going to work any longer. Uh, they are also making these steps. They, they said on their uh, the State of the Budgie um, uh, blog on their post, they did say that they already have everything in place for the Ubuntu developers, the Fedora developers, all these guys specifically to get in here and be ahead of the game. So when they make this transition, everything's already set for them to plug in for their next development builds. So this is actually a really good approach to how they are running it. Uh, Gnome has another stupid decision. Now, I first saw this because I saw this from uh, this source here, and I was like, they're just trashing on Gnome, aren't they? Because then I saw it from another source that's just like, hey, Gnome has a default audio player now. And I was like, uh, just reading the headlines. See, see because I I'll read all the headlines, and then we throw a bunch of headlines into a document. And then the supporters on Thursday night after the show, uh, even if there's not a show, so there wasn't a show yesterday, mostly because of the power issues, um, we still get together because, you know, I can do that on a lot lower power system. We get together, we talk about the articles, and then we pick which ones we're going to use, and then we read them in fine detail. At least I read them in fine detail. I first just look at headlines, and I'm like, oh, no one gets a, uh, an audio player. That's pretty cool. And then I see this one, it's just like, okay, they're just hating on Gnome. And then I read the articles. No, Gnome made a really stupid decision here. 
this is dumb. <laughs> okay. So this is an application called uh, Decibel. And uh, now, prior to this, of course, GNOME had embedded, um, I think it was it Celluloid is the one they're actually using. It's a, it's an, just a, a basic, very simple uh, MPV viewer. Okay. You just, you click a, you click a file, whether it's music or whether it's a video, you click it, it opens in this super lightweight thing, it plays it, and then it's done. Very simple. You don't need much more than that. If you're talking about just playing either a simple video or a simple audio, that is awesome. It works perfect. Now, if a person needs more, uh, more, um, library elements, playlists, and things like that. There are a plethora of things to install. I generally do like Lollipop or something, uh, although there's uh, Clementine slash Strawberry. There's uh, Rhythm Box. I mean, there's just so many different options out there that work better in this case. What did they go with? They go with Decibel. Decibel is a system that, like the old application that they had that did audio and video. Now we have one for video and now another for audio that does the same thing. On top of that, it's written in TypeScript. So it is a JavaScript based application that is not in any other repositories except for Flatpak. They're cramming it on in here. And basically all it does is it plays the audio with a waveform. It doesn't support playlists. It doesn't support libraries. It doesn't support anything you would expect from a more traditional media player. I mean, you think back even to the uh, Windows days, you had the Windows media player. That thing was awesome. That's actually why I liked Banshee best. It was uh, almost a direct replacement for that on Linux. Unfortunately, that went defunct. And I just kind of settled on Lollipop because I generally don't do a lot of stuff with uh, audio players much anyway. Lollipop does all the features or actually VLC is another one that I will work with. Some of my computers have Lollipop, some of them have VLC. This is a really stupid decision. JavaScript based application that does nothing but play a single audio file with a waveform. No library support, no other features, and uh, that's it, folks. <laughs> so what we had is the simplicity of one application that can handle both of them the exact same way. Now we have two applications that handle each of them in the exact same way. I agree with this article. Gnome did just make another really stupid decision. So now we have more Gnome bloatware. Yay! Very awesome. <laughs> and on to the article that you probably all clicked this for. Uh, Microsoft is planning to kill the Steam Deck. And I had to read this article five or six times to figure out, is this really just clickbait or is Microsoft actually having a plan? So, of course, what's behind this is Steam is completely taking over the gaming world. Whether you are are a Microsoft user or, um, I don't know, can you do Steam on Mac? I have no idea. Sorry, I'm not a gamer. Uh, but on all of these systems, okay, Steam still is the way people go. And one of the things they said in here is even a Windows gamer generally has a Steam account. They don't generally have an Xbox account. Uh, an Xbox account generally is those that are exclusively playing exclusively. I'm making up words exclusively playing Xbox on consoles. Typically, well, you do have the Xbox account capability. Typically, if people are gaming on a computer, to my understanding, they're generally using Steam more likely than an Xbox based account. And so this is really irritating Microsoft. And they've done some things. They've actually tried to buy both Valve and Nintendo in order to stifle this because, you know, Windows is still operating. Many people say they've changed their ways, but I believe they're still operating under Embrace, Extend, Extinguish here. And they've gotten this, they've gotten out of control. A fire has started up. A steam engine is moving. The valves are turning and they're like, we don't know what to do. And so they're doing everything they can to kind of stop Stop it. Of course, Steam just came out and basically said, hey, we are going to be uh, releasing the Steam OS system. And whereas Microsoft has had a problem getting small portable gaming consoles working, they had some uh, like this Lenovo. The problem is, is that the UI for Windows, even in a gaming console mode, really was not well suited to a device like this.
this, whereas SteamOS was perfectly suited to a device like this. And so what's happening now is the uh, these different companies are now seeing the success with Steam and the SteamOS and saying, I think we'd like that because I'm guessing that the licensing terms are probably a little bit better. So Microsoft is a little bit mad about this, and so they hinted at CES that what they are going to be working towards is merging Xbox uh, and Windows to have like a, the the Xbox Lite version of Windows, I guess. And they're trying to roll out this Xbox everywhere, so your game can be your your phone can be Xbox, your your computer can be Xbox, your tablet can be Xbox, and they're going to be rolling this campaign out in the near future. Their idea here is that they are trying to capture back the market share that Valve and Steam has taken, although some people are skeptical of it because Microsoft just does not have as much, as much as Windows is the domineer in the gaming world, the Microsoft accounts related to gaming isn't a big part of what makes up Microsoft. And so the platform works until Steam comes along and they're fixing almost all these issues. To the, my understanding, talking to the gamers, to my understanding, the gaming is now working so well that the only titles that aren't working well on Linux are just the anti-cheat AAA games. Once those are solved, and uh, who knows, if if all of these portable consoles based on SteamOS comes out and everybody starts running SteamOS, I have a sneaky suspicion those guys might start supporting Linux. Everyone's going to it. Well, why not? And so Microsoft is working on this uh, unified Xbox-type system in response to uh, SteamOS. So that's good. And uh, I don't know. I, I'm not a gamer one way or the other. I don't really have a dog in this fight. But I'm rooting for Valve. <laughs> okay? I'm rooting for Valve. Why not, right? <laughs> Well, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. You can jump on over there. Of course, last Monday, we did release the last short story. That was one of my favorite of all the short stories I've written so far. Uh, if you've not had a chance to see that one, uh, you can go over there. Of course, if you are uh, any level over on Patreon, you can read that. The audiobook link is good until February 15th, so you can download the audiobook for that. And if you are just a free member over there, you can purchase the article and the audiobook link for for three dollars, uh, of course, that's good only until uh, February fifteenth. Uh, you can, of course, pick up the other uh, the code red books over there if you're contemplating being a Patreon supporter. Uh, the audiobook and the ebook of Code Red is free if you are five dollars or up on Patreon. So you can uh, jump on over those, be five dollar and up, and just download those. Otherwise, you can purchase them if you are one dollar or a free member. Patreon.com/slash tomm, and that will support all of my channels. And by the way, our writing channel is back on. We're releasing one video a week on Saturday morning. Tomorrow's video is a, an updated introduction to LibreOffice as it relates specifically to authors and writers. Thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.